Hey there, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. Uh, this time it's a Steven Seagal film that I did not know uh, was released. I guess it came out last year and a few people told me about it. The reason they told me about it, I know this is why, because I'm one of the few people that have reviewed pretty much every single Steven Seagal film. His classics, which I love, like Above the Law, Out for Justice, March for Death, Under Siege, even you know The Glimmer Man I enjoy. I reviewed all those films. I also reviewed all of his directed video films, and there was a lot of shitty ones. Black Dawn, The Day You Die, Attack Force. I swear my body wanted to throw up thinking of Attack Force. That's not even a joke. That's not even like a, oh, damn it, look how funny I said I was going to throw up. No, Attack Force literally made me want to puke just now. Uh, the Foreigner. A lot of horror, terrible stuff. Once in a while, a, a film that was decent, like Urban Justice or Into the Sun, like, eh, it's alright, like, but there's very few and far in between. I mean, hell, the last time I dealt with Seagal, when I did my Steven Seagal marathon, he did like six, seven movies in one fucking year, like Sniper Special Ops, and End of a Gun, and The Perfect Weapon. I'm like, no, there's one perfect weapon, it's Jeff fucking Speakman. Bullshit. So now we get, since I reviewed pretty much 99.9% .9 of Steven Seagal's filmography, I have a playlist on my channel that has all the Seagal reviews on there. If I remember, I'll put it in the info box. Here's his new one, Attrition, which Seagal wrote. And he's done interviews saying, this is the best film I've done in 20 years. I'm like, no, it's not. I still put Urban Justice and Into the Sun above this. Okay, I will give you this with attrition. Well, I okay, the plot, I guess people want to know the plot. The short version bad guy has an aversion to sunlight to light, so he lives indoors. And the bad guy wants this girl who's a healer, so they get these people to kidnap the girl. The dad wants his, do his daughter back, so begs the girl to do it. Steven Seagal, who's an ex-Special Forces, because he's got to always be that, gets his old team together, and they go in to rescue the girl. And he used to be an ex-Special Forces, Forces, now he's a man of peace, and he's a healer, the type of healer that has the little pins, and acupuncture. That's really the plot. The movie has all right cinematography, doesn't look too cheap. It doesn't. I'll give you that. I didn't notice too much Seagal dubbing, meaning other people dubbing his own voice. When there are fight scenes, I don't notice too much doubles, although there's one scene that I might, I could tell he got doubled quite a bit. Because it's one of those where it shot one version going this way, and you see Seagal's face. Okay, he's doing that. But on the other side, facing the bad guy, when it cuts to that, it's the Seagal, the Seagal character doing these crazy kicks. I'm like, Seagal can't do those kicks. Believe me. I've seen enough of his movies to know he can't do those kicks. He can do like one type of kick, where it's like straight up. Pretty much it. But with that said, if this is the best he can come up with, and saying this is the best film he's done in 20 years, then he should retire. Because even in his sincere attempt at a movie, he fails hard. It's boring, it's slow, it takes fucking forever to get going, and it has some of the worst CGI blood I have ever seen. Ninja Assassin's blood looks like George Romero's Day of the Dead compared to the CGI blood in this. It's that fucking awful. It is terrible. And this came out last year, 2018. 
And this movie, nothing much fucking happens. Seagal gets in fight scenes as many as one hand that you can count. You have a brief scene where him and group are going in, military operation, he's a mercenary, you know, special forces, of course, shoots a guy or two, they find this dead person, now he's retired, he's a healer, again, the bad guy, like the sunlight or something, hurts his eyes, so he wants this girl, like I said. I will admit there's one sort of interesting piece of direction I'll give credit to, where they show a guy, they put his hand in a meat grinder, but they show it backwards, because they have like the jar that was dumped in, and then you see it going backwards, and then you see the hand coming out of the meat grinder, and then backwards to like him on a table, and then backwards of them cutting the finger off, and you know taking the ring off. A little bit different, unique. I'll give credit to that one scene. Shot decently well. Not typical. Doesn't save the film, but I got your credit where credit's due. And yeah, weird shit. Like, I guess maybe Seagal wasn't sure to do this job because after the woman's taken, the dad's like, please help me. Seagal's like, oh, I don't do that anymore. Then so when Seagal was sleeping, he gets visited by an angel, an Asian angel, who's naked, got titties out. So I guess if you're an angel with titties hanging out, that makes Seagal wake up and do the job. There's literally a scene he's sleeping, and like a woman, right, like it's an angel, floats down, and for, I don't know why she's naked. I don't know why her titties are out. That's probably what Seagal wrote in the script. I'm going to have an angel. It's got to be some titties. I guess the angel had to have titties. And I don't mean angel like you see wings, but you get the idea she's supposed to be an angel, at least to Seagal. This is like the fucking scene on Deadly Ground where he fights with a fucking bear in a dream scene. But even on Deadly Ground with his mishaps, at least the action was pretty badass. Because that was Seagal in his prime when he could do the action. And you actually had brutal blood squibs and blood effects. Like when he took the guy, stabbed him in the head with a knife, turned around and had the knife come back the other side. Like brutal practical elements. Like On Deadly Ground is one of those films where the story sucks and the weird Seagal shit sucks, but as an action film, there's a pretty damn good action. Good fight scenes where you tell it's Seagal. Wide shots. Seagal the whole time. When Seagal was in shape. I'm like, Seagal, if you really want to be serious, get back into shape, man. Then you can prove... Here's what you do, Seagal. You get back in the shape. You shave your fucking beard and mustache. You get some muscles going. You get thinner. And go back to that brutal bone crunching. Your know, bones popping out. You know, knives in the people's fucking foreheads. Practical effects. But this is a guy that has had so many accusations of sexual harassment who fucking ran away to Russia so he can fucking dance and shit. There's videos of fucking Seagal dancing. Probably dances so he can get another bucket of fucking KFC. Or get a partnership with Wendy's or something. That's what he should do nowadays. He should just do fucking Wendy's commercials. This is Steven Seagal. And it's hard to find. Justice for the best deals, unless you go to Wendy's. I don't even eat at Wendy's. I don't know why I thought of Wendy's. Funny. I'm trying to remember what the fuck happened in the movie. Oh, there's this one guy who wants to fight Seagal in the rain. And I guess, like, Seagal just 
doesn't do much. He really doesn't do much at all. A few moves. Very boring fight scene. Nothing to it. Just does a little bit of this and then this. And then Jazz, oh, thank you. Um, I am sorry that I did that. And I respect you, Master. This Sigal's got a fucking eagle the size of Texas. This is one point where he fights these two bad guys. He hits one guy in the head once, chases another guy. Well, chase. He's not going to chase anybody. He's out, he's out running nowadays. Gets to this guy, punches him, throws a guy, kicks him with that one kick he can do. And then does this like one punch and the guy flies through the door. So go gets his team back together. And we're already like an hour in and well, no, at least halfway into it. All that's left is this is one scene in a shop where Seagal is fighting this guy. And anytime he Seagal hits the guy in the face, this bad CGI spits out of the guy's mouth. I mean bad. Horrendous CG blood. Fake. Literally, like, cartoon would be given a praise to call it cartoonish. Like, Microsoft, like, if I went to my fucking paint and took red and just, it's like the same thing. Like, someone actually saw this and went, good. Is, are you blind? Or is people around you just so chicken shit they want to speak up? I'll speak up. Your CGI blood looks like fucking dog shit. It's the worst CGI blood I've seen. Perhaps ever. It was that fucking off. I, that's why I'm honing in on it. And this adult even tries to do the Ip Man thing where he does the pa -pa 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 on the guy's face. Like Donnie Yen did an It Man, but that movie's a good movie. It Man 2 is a good movie. Both of them are good movies. Sorry, Sigal, you're no It Man, you're no Donnie Yen. You're doing your fucking fast punch on the guy, and a bunch of CGI bullets flying out of his mouth. Your scene's kind of ruined. Just exclude the kind of part. It's ruined. Dumb fuck. And then the finale, they go to this club, they rescue this girl. This is one guy, I forget, this is how forgettable, it, this is how memorable it is, I guess I should say. So memorable, I forgot what the fuck the characters were, their names, or what they had to do with the story. But this one guy who works with Seagal, who has this sort of gray, white suit, he gets a couple fight scenes, and he does better than Seagal. Like, his fight scenes are, are fine. Nothing memorable, nothing worth renting the movie for, but... I mean, wow, this guy's moving faster and better, and he's doing it all. And that fight in the shop is what I'm talking about b before I move on. That fight in the shop, when I said, when you're facing the camera here, you see Seagal, you tell, of course, it's Seagal. But when it's over here, Seagal's like doing this kick, 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 or kick to knee, kick to knee, kick. I'm like, Seagal doesn't do those kind of kicks. That's why the camera's over here, and you see the body, but not the face. And the face is cut off. If you want to show it, show both of them in the same frame and don't cut. Don't edit. Or have them do this, then edit, then edit maybe to here and see both their faces in the same screen. And the same momentum the whole time. No, just saying. So, yeah. Don't give me this, there's no body doubles bullshit. There were. Maybe not as much as others, but there were a couple. And the fight scenes are nothing with Seagal. Again, if this is the best he can do, he should retire. Don't do Under Siege 3. Don't do uh, Above the Law 2. Just retire. Because you can't do it anymore. You can't. If this is the best thing you've done in 20 years, then it shows how shitty your career is nowadays. And... 
again, I would argue that Into the Sun and Urban Justice were better movies than this. Maybe they don't have, well, Urban Justice didn't have the same cinematography as this movie, but for his down-to-earth, uh, bone-breaking elements, that's more entertaining to all film than this. But during this club, you know, his team wipe out some people. You have a sniper guy. You have this lady that stabs one with his own knife and embraces the guy's neck with her coat. This guy with the gray white suit fights a guy. He fights more than one guy. And again, he does better than Seagal does in this movie. And then Seagal fights the main guy, the main villain. And it's just a slap fight. Turns, guy flies, then he has swords, Sadol hits it, guy tosses it for some reason, gets another sword. Sadol like, grabs it under his armpit, goes up, cuts the guy's arm off, and cuts his throat. Again, horrendous fucking CGI blood. Then everything's fine, everyone leaves. Sagol has this speech where the film like flashes back to multiple scenes in the film. I'm like, we already saw the film. Why are you showing us the fucking film again? It's like showing the film again. Like, this is the two-minute version of the film you just saw. And then the end credits is Stan Sagol on a stage, singing and having this fucking guitar. So great. You just had to end it with Sagol singing with his fucking guitar. Jesus Christ. This film fucking sucks. It is like a four point something out of ten I am to be, understandably so. So yeah, you just say he has decent cinematography, uh, that maybe I I can't really say why people would say there are a couple reviewers going, oh Sigol is back. I'm like, back to what? Back to dinner? Back to the buffet line? I believe that. Back to what? Back to shittiness? Back to school? What? What? Back to what? Back to sucking? I'll believe you on that. Just as the film doesn't look as cheap as some of his directed video films, and the film isn't that batshit awful. Yeah, it's not as batshit awful as Attack Force. It's not as batshit awful as Against the Dark. So that's bash it awful as Today You Die or Black Dawn. This still doesn't make it a good movie. And it doesn't make it a decent movie. So go, again, you count one hand how many fights he has, and they're lame, boring, quick fights. You have horrible fucking, the worst CGI blood, some of the worst CGI blood at least. It's hard to pick what the number one movie for worst CG blood, but this is up there. Weird shit like angels with naked titties waking it all up. And it did. It's boring and it takes forever to get going. And then when it gets going, nothing that you haven't seen in dozens and dozens of other movies. This movie is bullshit. Not worth watching. It really isn't. I don't know why Sigal, like, he wrote this and he's so proud of it, fine. Like I said before, this is the best you can do, retire. Go open up a fucking Dunkin' Donuts in Russia and sell Dunkin' Donuts. Be the Dunkin' Donuts mascot. Be like that fucking guy in the commercials in the 80s and 90s. I gotta get the donuts ready. Be that fucking guy. And just do Dunkin' Donuts commercials in Russia while you're fucking dancing to the theme of Dunkin' Donuts. You want to see, see the fucking theme of Dunkin' Donuts, then. Please. So glad that... I'm so glad he didn't do, like, another six or seven movies like he did back in, what was it, 2016 or 17, whatever the fuck it was. So glad he didn't do that. Uh, in the future, there's no movies on the horizon, as far as I know. Thank God. Just said, oh, you're just done like you've done like dinner.
which I'm sure you're at right now, fattening your fucking fat face. Oh, you make your, yeah, I'm making fun of him because he hasn't been worth a shit in decades. And people want to kiss his fat ass, be my guest. But you know what? He just eats that up and keeps making these shitty movies upon shitty movies. And he's not going to get better. It's never going to happen. Aliens will arrive first before Siddal makes another good movie again. And that's the fucking fat Jack. Later.